So here's the thing with events and birthdays. You take the most amazing photos and then they never make it out of your camera roll. At best, they're buried in a group chat or they're put in a Google Drive link that, let's be honest, nobody will look at ever again. So I wanted to build something better. A way for people to collect their memories together, but in a way that feels beautiful and worth revisiting instead of just a file dump. I'd had this idea of bouncing around in my head for a while now, but finally, this summer, right before a friend's wedding, I decided to act on it. I hacked together a prototype called My Ever Afters. So guests could scan a QR code at their table, they could upload photos throughout the night, and then later they would get an album. And it worked way better than I expected. People uploaded a ton of photos, the couple loved it, and it was so cool to see an idea that's been in my head for so long actually working. So after the wedding, I was like, okay, I need to create a landing page and a wait list. And sure enough, the second I put it up, people were already joining the wait list, which is when reality hit me that my prototype is just a prototype. That is where Warp comes in. Warp just dropped their big September release and they gave me early access about a week ago. They released tools that essentially merge Claude code and cursor in one, the ability to start with prompt and edit review code directly in one interface. One of the big reasons why I wanted to give Warp a try in the first place was because of the benchmarks. Warp is ranked number one on Terminal Bench and it scored 75.8% on SWE Bench Verified, apparently outperforming tools like Claude Code, Codex, and Gemini CLI. These numbers are impressive, but benchmarks only tell part of the story. I want to see how it actually feels to use Warp on a real project with real problems and whether it can really make my workflow feel smoother. So today, I'm going to be putting Warp to the test on three real dev tasks from my my code base that I have been putting off. One, being an accessibility audit. Two, being performance and optimization. And three, setting up dev versus prod environments. Let's see how it handles it. So for accessibility improvements, I wanna make sure that everybody and anybody can use my app. So that means that we have alt tags, that we have better color contrast, and that focus states are okay. For performance and reliability, it is working just fine with one wedding, but imagine if we have hundreds of users and everybody's uploading and rendering photos, we really need to make sure our site is optimized. For the deployment setup, at the moment, everything is still running off of a scrappy config file that I threw together during the prototype. And so we want to make sure that our prod config is safe and secure. So we got to change those settings. All right, so we're going to start by opening um, our My Ever Afters repository. And you'll notice here that it says, would you like the agent to index this code base? This will lead to more efficient and tailored help. So this is an option that you can either skip or index, but what this will do is it'll help you understand your project structure and it will also generate completions that match your style and patterns. So I think it's a great idea and you can do it for any code base. So let's just say yes. The next question is, would you like to create a warp.md file? Warp can create one for you with project specific rules, context and conventions inferred from your code base. The agent will use this context as it codes. So let's go ahead and do that as well. While it's doing that, I'm actually gonna show you over here when you go to settings. So the code base index, so here you can actually set the setting to index new folders by default if you so choose. Um, and right now, like I already indexed my SLS demo folder and now it's syncing my rafters, but if at any point you wanna just remove it, you can do so. Okay, so let's go back to here and see, it might take some time, so we're just gonna wait. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and apply these changes. We want to create that WarpMD file. And it says here that the WarpMD file focuses on the big picture architecture that requires reading multiple files to understand, avoid repeating obvious information and provide practical guidance for productive development in this code base. So let's see if it actually does that. All right, so for the accessibility feature, I wrote a detailed prompt that is this. Analyze my entire project's code base, including HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and component files to perform a complete accessibility audit. I need a detailed list of accessibility issues, code fixes applied directly in the relevant files of the practices, explanations for each fix so I can understand why it's needed, and suggestions for testing tools or scripts I can run to validate accessibility going forward. Please detect my framework automatically and tailor solutions to it. So let's see how it does. One thing that I do like about Warp is that it gives me this task list for the AI agent so that I know where it's at and what it's trying to do in what order. 
And if you lose track of the task list up here, you can actually look at it down here as well. Okay, so let's see what we're missing. So we were missing ARIA labels and semantic HTML, missing focus management and keyboard access. We're missing labels, proper associations, inadequate alt text and ARIA attributes. Yeah, these are all things that I figured I was missing when I did my prototype because I was in a rush. Okay, so let's go ahead and apply these changes. I like being able to see these changes directly here. The other thing that I can do is after I apply the changes, so I can view my changes at any time. So this will show all of my changes, the uncommitted changes that it's done so far across files, which I like because it's like, you don't get the full code editor like you do with VS Code, but you can still see all of your changes here. And right over here, you can also um, compare it against main as well, which I think is a super cool feature. And I like the fact that I can approve each change and it stops for me to approve each change. But in the case that you just wanted to auto approve, there's a button here that will auto approve all agent actions for this task. Also in the case that I don't agree with some of these changes, oh, I love this feature. You can just go and inline edit it. So you know, here I can bring stuff back. So there's a cool feature that I want to share with you guys. So if you go to command shift P, um, you'll go to the command palette. And from here you can search open AI rules. And here you can set either global or project based rules. So this is something that the AI agent will pay attention to and make sure to adhere to. So here, let's go ahead and add something for accessibility. So what we're going to do is we're going to say accessibility alt tags as the name and the rule be to always add descriptive alt tags to images. So we're going to save that. So now moving forward, anytime there's an image in an HTML that is created, it should add a descriptive alt tag to it. Another feature that I feel like has to be mentioned is the fact that you can run more than one agent simultaneously. And I think this is super helpful. So right now I have this accessibility agent working on fixing my accessibility, but I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna create another agent that's gonna go ahead and work on optimization. So this is the prompt that I gave it. Review my project's code base and configuration to identify performance bottlenecks. I need an audit of inefficient code patterns, Optimize build settings, concrete code changes to improve runtime speed, updated configuration files, and a before and after comparison so I can see the impact of the optimizations. And I said, please detect my framework automatically and apply optimizations tailored to it. So let's see how it does with this. So we're gonna press enter and it's gonna start working. And what I think is so cool about this when you compare it to something like Cursor is in Cursor, you have to open up a separate browser window just to do something similar. And I do find that when I'm doing some sort of vibe coding or sometimes I'm sitting here twiddling my thumbs waiting for something to finish when I could be working on yet another task on my to-do list, um, which in this case is optimization, so. I do feel like this workflow is more optimized for dev efficiency compared to some of the other AI coding tools out there. So wow, the performance audit summary, it found quite a few things wrong with my project and I'm not surprised because like I said, I hacked this together super fast. It wasn't meant to be good initially, but now we need it to be better because photos take up a lot of space and we need it to be optimized. So, Things that it found in terms of performance bottlenecks, um, it found that all photos are loaded on initial render, which you add more, it'll be a problem. Um, no lazy loading, CSS animations defined in JavaScript instead of CSS, unnecessary re-renders. So we're gonna have it fix all of these things. So temporarily, I went ahead and turned on auto approve for all agent actions. So while that is running, we're actually going to head and start a third agent that's going to look at setting up some performance benchmarks. So the prompt that I gave it is uh, detect my front end framework and set up reproducible performance benchmarks. Do this, add Lighthouse CI to measure core web vitals and then add a bundle analyzer and run a baseline now and save the reports to that location. So let's see how it does. So it looks like my performance optimization agent completed. Um, and so here's a summary of what it did and the files that it created and the build results. So that's great. I'm super excited to see these numbers now. That looks way better. And once again, I can go ahead and take a look at these changes over here, everything that's been changed, which there's quite a lot of them now at this point. 
In the meantime, it looks like my accessibility audit also finished. So these are all the issues that it fixed. Amazing, so the Lighthouse performance analysis is now running and you can see here in the terminal, it's displaying everything that it's doing. So I just love the fact that I don't have to go to my terminal or elsewhere to get this to work. I know I've repeated that like three times now, but it's great. So I went ahead and pushed all those changes for the accessibility and the performance. And now we're gonna do one more thing. We're gonna go ahead and um, we're going to set up a clear development and production environment. So I have a new agent that I'm setting up with that. And so I'm telling it that I need separate configuration files for dev and prod, scripts or commands to switch between environments, optimized production settings, and developer friendly settings for local use. So it did well with everything else. So I'm hoping that it'll do well with this. So while this is running, we're actually gonna go ahead and add one more global rule. And that will be never commit env. And so that's exactly what we're going to say is never commit the .env file to GitHub. I've noticed with tools like Cursor that if you don't explicitly tell it to not um, commit the .env file, there are sometimes cases where it messes up and it does that. And I'm not sure if that's the case with Warp, but I'm just setting this rule as a precaution. So most of the features that I showed you now are new. And so if you've used Warp in the past, you know, maybe this is a chance to try it out again and see if you like it better um, with the agentic development environment. I think it's absolutely a game changer. Stepping back, what excites me here isn't just that my small app is now more production ready but that the developer landscape is shifting. More and more of coding feels like it's moving towards prompts and collaborating with agents instead of grinding through syntax line by line. There is still so much we need to know and think about as engineers, design, architecture, trade-offs, but it's honestly refreshing to be able to take some of those easier, smaller tasks and have AI automate them. Writing tests, cleaning up configs, enforcing accessibility, these are all things that may have been skipped in the past in a rush to ship. But with agents, it doesn't feel like a chore anymore. For me, that means spending more energy on front-end polish or back-end changes without sacrificing quality along the way. And that's a big deal, not just for this project, but how I think about building software in general. So yeah. Warp did help me here. And if this is where the tools are heading, I think we're gonna write higher quality code and have more fun doing it.